the following story is true. Okay, uh, this is in the the late '90s. I was going to school at uh, at Buffalo State College, and uh, I spent a lot of time in a particular coffee house, mostly um, because, uh, well, uh, because I, I was poor, and they had 25 cent refills on coffee, so uh, I could stay there almost all day and not pay a lot of money for coffee in the end. So. But that's not, a, that's not the important part of the story. Here, here's the important part of the story. One time I got stuck talking to this guy who told me all about how he was training in a variety of martial arts. And he named a bunch of them. Um, some of them I think he may have been making up. Uh, but then he got to one very important detail about his training. It was where he was getting his training from. And he told me that, yeah, what I've been doing is studying Tekken. Now, for those of you that don't know, Tekken is a video game. It's, uh, you know, one of those fighting video games where you pick a character and either you, the computer or another person picks another character and you karate, 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 karate. Hey, we haven't done that in a while, but that's, that's the game. So he was studying the video game so he could be a master of the martial arts. Now, a uh, couple things. One, that's a stupid idea. Two, you know what he lacked? Do you know why I don't think that, uh, uh, that he was much of a martial arts expert? Because he has no ethos. Ethos is going to be what I want to talk to you about today. Um, ethos is uh, one of the methods of persuasion. It's a type of, of rhetoric. What ethos is, and, and some of you may remember this from the definitions that you guys put together, ethos is the credibility of the speaker or the presenter. Why, why do you believe them or trust them? If someone is trying to persuade you, isn't it more convincing if they're an expert in that field or just generally a very trustable person? This is Jennifer Aniston. I am in love with Jennifer Aniston and I'm not even that big of a fan of the television show Friends. But here's the deal with Jennifer Aniston. Uh, she is over 50 years old. She's older than I am. And she is stunningly beautiful. And she seems very nice. All these things led to her being the spokesperson for a vino skin lotion. Perhaps you've seen the commercials. And when you think about it, she's a perfect choice to promote that product because she has ethos. She obviously knows the secrets to staying stunningly gorgeous for decades. And so maybe we should listen to her if she says, hey, this Aveeno stuff is pretty good. We see this all the time in commercials. Think about a, a toothpaste commercial. How often is, is it a dentist singing the praises of a toothpaste? Whenever you can get an expert to weigh in, that's ethos. Think about the show, The Voice. Look at these judges. They're all very well-established singers. They have the expertise to judge other singers. Side note, I'm also in love with Gwen Stefani. Um, please don't tell Jennifer Aniston. I would hate to see them uh, get into uh, a, a scrap over me. Um, did, did you know that Gwen Stefani has some real solid punk rock roots? That's one of the reasons I'm kind of in love with her. I have no idea what she sees in this Blake Shelton guy. I'm, especially punk rock and country, those are such opposites. But I guess, you know, opposites attract Romeo and Juliet, Swamp Monsters, and the narrator from Swamp Monsters, Make Bad Housewives. Eventually this year, we'll get to all my celebrity crushes. Sometimes ethos can take the form of just plain old coolness. Like, uh, remember when Chance the Rapper was uh, promoting Kit Kat bars? Look, I'm going to be totally honest with you, and I don't think you're going to be surprised to hear this. I don't really know who Chance the Rapper is. Um, it's, he, he doesn't show up on my Spotify playlist very much, um, but, uh, but I'm aware of his coolness. And, uh, 
and apparently so is uh, Kit Kat. So they're like, hey, let's have Chance the Rapper promote our candy bar. And maybe people will eat our candy bar because they want to be cool like Chance the Rapper. Or sometimes uh, a spokesperson can just be someone people trust. Like, uh, like I don't know about you, but uh, Tom Hanks and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, they could pretty much sell anything to me. They seem incapable of lying or being jerks. So if they tell me about to buy a product, I'm probably going to at least think about it. Oh, what does this have to do with your essay? I will tell you what this has to do with your essay. Let's face it, you are not an expert on whether or not the internet is having a negative impact on our thinking. Don't feel bad. I'm not an expert in that field either. But you'll be grabbing quotes from the four texts that I put out there, regardless of, of, uh, of, of what stance you're, you're taking and within those within those texts they get a lot of information from experts here I'm looking at a, a piece of text 4 um, this is lines 30 through 35 one person who has studied the effects of technology on people is UCLA's Patricia Greenfield. Exposure to technology fundamentally changes the way people think, says Greenfield, who recently analyzed more than 50 studies on learning and technology, including research on multitasking and the use of computers, the internet, and video games. As reading for pleasure has declined and visual media has have exploded, noticeable changes have resulted, she notes. Now, here's... Uh, a, a, a quote grabbed from that section without an emphasis on ethos. Ready? Reading for pleasure has declined and visual media have exploded. Noti noticeable changes have resulted. Okay, just like that, like we have this information, but also like according to who? Is this just a general observation from Joe Schmo on the street? Sincere apologies to any real Joe Schmoes. Uh, you're a good man and I don't mean to throw you under the bus. Look at the difference with the following version of the same quote, but I'm going to phrase things a little bit differently to bring up the ethos. Ready? As reading for pleasure has declined and visual media have exploded, noticeable changes have resulted according to UCLA's Patricia Greenfield, who has analyzed more than 50 studies on learning and technology. See the difference? See the difference? We're letting our reader know where this information comes from and not just labeling it from a text, but we're also telling our reader who Patricia Greenfield is and what makes her an expert in this field. I mean, she's working over at UCLA, analyzing 50-some studies, she might be worth listening to. So when you're putting together your essay, uh, take a look at where these quotes are coming from. And I don't mean just text number. Of course, you're going to take a look at the text number because we're going to need that for the citation, not the line number this time around because we, we talked about that. But who is giving this information? Do they have expertise? If they do, include it. So I put together a short celebration of knowledge, some people like to call it a quiz, uh, about the contents of this video. It's in Schoology, it's short, it's multiple choice. If you're not sure, rewind the video, fast forward, rewatch the whole thing, do whatever it is you gotta do. I hope you do real well. And tomorrow we're gonna talk about pathos, and I'll uh, explain what that is tomorrow. All right, I'm going to skedaddle out of here. Uh, best of luck on the, uh, the celebration of knowledge. Don't forget, uh, this video is, is not going anywhere. The information is here, so, uh, so play it smart. All right, we'll, we'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a lot like today. See you again tomorrow.